fellow cyborgs, today I'm going to be showing you my red bookcase, which is the one right behind me. I'm not going to be doing a like traditional pull all the books out, but I'm going to be showing you the shelves intimately. And I'm sorry for the camera work, I do not have a traditional tripod where I can get all the way up to the top shelves and have it be stable, so I'm going to be free holding it for the things that I can't put on like a stable surface. So I hope you apologize the relative shakiness of it, but I hope you get a kick out of seeing all of the books that I currently have on my red shelf. Those are the books that I have loved and intend to reread in the future, and I will just get started showing you the books. So here is the bookcase at in its total. At the bottom there are children's picture books, then on the shelf above that it's children's books. Then we've moved on to plays, poetry, and YA. Then up to nonfiction, sci science fiction, and fantasy. Then we've got my classic shelf, and at the tippy top we've got literary fiction and some of my favorites. So let's start at the top. So here we have, starting off at the very, very far left, we have Sophie Carlin's Fox for a Dream Tale. Then, As Birds Bring Forth the Sun by Alistair MacLeod. He's the one that's got glare on his spine. Then we have Aurora, which is a, like, mermaid tale that I got from Catalina Island, and it's just, like, this handmade little book. Then we've got Mr. Fox by Helen Oyoyemi, At the Mouth of the River of Bees by Kais Johnson, Alice by Christina Henry, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody by Muriel Spark, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, Deathless by Catherine M. Valenti, The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver, The Awakening and Other Stories by Kate Chopin, How the Blessed Live by Susanna M. Smith, Anecdotes of Destiny by Isaac Dennison, Her Fearful Symmetry by Audrey Niffenegger, The Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki, Santa and Pete by Moore and Johnson. I think it's Christopher Moore and Pamela Johnson. A Portable Shelter by Kirsty Logan. The Stone Gods by Jeanette Winterson. And The Rabbit Back Literature Society by Posse Ilmari Askelainen, translated by Lola M. Rogers. So as you could see, it was done in rainbow order. And here are the purples and blacks. We've got Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami, translated by Jay Rubin. The Boy with the Cuckoo Cock Cart by Matthias Maltzieu. And that is translated by someone, let me figure out who it is real quick. So that one is translated by Sara Ardizon. Then right next to it, right there, sorry, we've got The Iron Duke by Mel Jean Brooke, Donna Tartt's The Secret History, War for the Oaks by Emma Bull, The Mischief of the Mistletoe by Lauren Willig, The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzak, The Fox Woman and Fudoki by Kais Johnson, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, and The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan, and then my Peter Pan tin that holds my hurdy-gurdies. Then down here on my classic shelf we have a creepy ceramic angel that I painted, my Claire de Lune Victorian fairy snow globe, and a cute little box there. Then for books we have 1984 by George Orwell, East of Eden by John Steinbeck, My Love, Watership Down by Richard Adams, The Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas in the like Borders cloth bound editions that no longer exist. Well, I mean, they exist, but they're not being produced anymore because Borders died. Then we have To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Other Stories by Robert Louis Stevenson, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. We've got Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, and this includes Kensington Garden and the play of Peter Pan, as well as the novel of Peter Pan. Then we've got The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston. Leroux. I don't have a translator in that edition of it, unfortunately. The Ghost and Mrs. Muir by R.A. Dick, Trist by Ellsworth Thane, and A Christmas Carol and Other Stories, a Reader's Digest version by Charles Dickens. Then over here we have my small Persephone collection. From left to right there's Operation Heartbreak by Duff Cooper, Lady Rose and Mrs. Memory by Ruby Ferguson, Still Missing by Beth Gutchison, Consider the Years by Virginia Graham, and The Montana Stories by Catherine Mansfield, and then my good luck star gift thing majig, which is my favorite gift that I've ever been given by a friend. Okay, so then we've got, uh, finally stabilized, we've got Hollywood Island, Catalina Island picture book, The Story of Alice by Robert Douglas Fairhurst, Kristen O'Keefe Aptowick's Dr. Mooter's Marvels, You're Never Weird on the Internet Almost by Felicia Day, 
two copies of Smoke It's In Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory by Caitlin Doty. One of those is my copy and one is a loner copy because I feel like everyone ever in their in the world should read that book. Party of One, The Loner's Manifesto by Annalie Rufus. John Singer Sargent by Sandra Forty, and that's a small tiny collection of some of his famous portraits. What Makes This Book So Great by Joe Walton. And then moving on to science fiction and fantasy, we've got Spirit in the Wires and The Blue Girl by Charles DeLint, Ancillary Justice and Ancillary Sword by Anne Leckie, Among Others and Tooth and Claw by Joe Walton, The Singular and Extraordinary Tale of Mirror and Goliath by Ishbel B, Tale Chaser Song by Tad Williams, The We Free Men by Terry Pratchett, Rose Daughter by Robin McKinley, Soulless and Changeless by Gail Carriger, Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Then up at the top of that horizontal pile is The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, A Medicine for Melancholy and Ours for Rocket by Ray Bradbury, Some Place to Be Flying by Charles DeLint, The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss, and then all by Timothy Zahn, we have Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command, part of the Thrawn trilogy, and then part one of the Hand of Thrawn duology, Spectre of the Past. All right, and then here on plays and poetry, I've just got like handouts of plays I studied in high school, mostly T.S. Eliot. Then we have Cyrano de Bergerac by Edmund Rostand, translated by Helen B. Dole. Then we have A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. I don't know the translator for that copy, unfortunately. Skylight by David Hare. William Shakespeare's The Phantom of Menace by Ian Dosher. Peter and Alice by John Logan. And then moving on to poetry, we have The Jane and Bertha in Me by Rita Maria Martinez. Then we have Life on Mars by Tracy K. Smith. A Short History of Crazy Bone by Patrick Friesen. Interlunar by Margaret Atwood. The Flowers of Evil and Other Works by Charles Baudelaire, and it's a dual language book. Then we have Love and Misadventure by Lang Leave, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot, Selected Poems by Emily Dickinson, The Love Poetry of John Donne, and The Cat in the Moon and Other Cat Poems published by the British Library. Then moving on to the YA, we have Sabriel, Lyriel, and Abhorson by Garth Nix, my favorite fantasy series ever. Lorelei by Laura Dockrell, The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, which I actually gave five stars when I read it two years ago. Not sure what I'd give it today, but it still is on my shelves. By Clive Barker, we have the first three Aberat novels, Aberat, Aberat Days of Magic Nights of War, and Aberat Absolute Midnight. Then we have Demon Road by Derek Landy, and by Lainey Taylor, we have the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, Days of Blood and Starlight, and Dreams of Gods and Monsters. Then we have some of my children's books. These are like chapter books. We have The Tale of Despero being The Story of a Mouse, A Princess, Some Soup, and A Spool of Thread by Kate D. Camillo. Then we have a box set of some Neil Gaiman's books illustrated by Chris Riddle. We have, oh no, everyone, we have The Graveyard Book, Fortunately, The Milk, and Coraline. Then we have the first two books in the Fairyland series by Catherine M. Valenti, The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making, and The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Rebels There. Then we have the first three books in Patricia C. Reed's Dealing with Dragons series. Sorry about the glare. There is Dealing with Dragons, Searching for Dragons, and Calling on Dragons. Then the first three books in the Anne of Green Gables series by Ellen Montgomery, Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea, and Anne of the Island. Then we have the Princess Tale series by Carson Levine. We have the Princess Test for Biddle's Sake, Princess Sonora and the Long Sleep, Cinderella and the Glass Hill, The Fairy's Return and The Fairy's Mistake. Then we have the Wayside School stories by Lewis Sacker. We've got sideways stories from Wayside School. Wayside School is falling down and Wayside School gets a little stranger. Then we have The Secret Garden by Frances Hodson, Hodgson Burnett. Catlantis by Anna Storobinets with illustrations by Andrew Klimowski and translated by Jane Bugeva, I think. And then we have in that blue that's got glare, The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, translated by Robert Howard. 
Then we have When Will This Cruel War Be Over? The Civil War Diary of Emma Simpson, and that's written by Barry Denenberg, and that was the first chapter book that I remember finishing, and that's why I have it on my shelves. Then we have some Eva Ibbotson, who's one of my favorite children's writers ever, and I haven't read her whole body of work yet, which is very, very exciting, because she's just so great and really doesn't fall into the stereotypes that a lot of other children's authors do. But I'm, we're not talking about Eva Ibbotson right now. On my shelves I have Island of the Aunts, Not Just a Witch and Dial a Ghost, Witch Witch, and The Secret of Platform 13. And those two are two in one. Then we have The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury, Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine, Holes by Lewis Sacker, Beauty by Robin McKinley, The Midwife's Apprentice by Karen Cushman, The Never-Ending Story by Michael Enda, translated by Ralph Mannheim, Backwater by Joan Bauer, The Maestro by Tim Wynne Jones, The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, and Serena by Donna Jo Napoli. And then down here we have my children's picture books. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly and I'm not going to pull them all out to get all the names because I'm a horrible person, but I just don't want to be here for another hour. So we've got Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, the Winnie the Pooh Storybook Treasury by A.A. A. Milne, Mother Goose in California by Doug Hansen, Swan by Laura Snyder and Julie Morstad, The Snow Queen, which is illustrated by Susan Jeffers, then we have The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which was written by Nancy Willard and illustrated by Leon and Diane Dillon, then we have Just Being Audrey by Margaret Cardillo and Julia Denos, then we've got The Mer Baby by Bateman and Brewster. And then we have some mermaid books. And I think I've talked about these first ones in my mermaid book, collect book collection video. So you can check those out down below. But then we do have two more Little Mermaid adaptations. One which is like the Walt official Walt Disney adaptation. And then this one which is published by Twin Books. Then we have Oh the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. Miss Hazeltine's Home for Shy and Fearful Cats by Alicia Potter and Brigitte Sif. More Altitude Quick and the Family of Re by Scott E. Sutton. This was a nice souvenir, this eating of it by some kids that I were babysitting and their dog, but you know, at least it's a story. Then we have Finding Winnie by Matic Blackall. Can't You Sleep, Little Bear by Waddell and Firth, and three other Little Bear stories. Twas the Night Before Christmas by Clement C. Moore, which is like the hallmark adaptation of that poem. A Cup of Christmas Tea by Tom Haig. The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. By William Joyce, we have To the Sandman and the Man in the Moon, part of the Guardians of Childhood series. Frankenstein Takes the Cake by Adam Rex. Then starting here, we have A Mother for Chaco by Kaza. The Monster Bed by Willis and Varley. The Sleeping Beauty by Mercer Mayer. By William Joyce, we have The Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lesmore. Then we have The Melancholic Mermaid by George and Halpin, Sea Tale by Haley, and then by Patrick Rothfuss we have The Adventures of the Princess and Mr. Whiffle, and The Adventures of Princess and Mr. Whiffle, The Dark of Deep Below. Then we have The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams, Mermaids, a an Anthology by Ratisseau, and then we have a whole bunch of these really little books, including The Leaf Men by Will. William Joyce, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendek, Hawaii for Wadney Watt by Lester and Munsinger, some of the mermaid books that I mention in my mermaid book collection, and some other just like little kids books that I'm not going to pull out today because I's too lazy, sorry. Then we have Frog and Toad by Lobel, this put yourself in your own adventure book that I have from when I was like five, Franklin's Blanket and Madeline. Then we've got some of the corduroy books and Harold and the Purple Crayon and Eeyore Loses a Tail. And then here we've got my small collection of the Baby Lit books, Emma, Jane Eyre, Alice in Wonderland, and Wuthering Heights. Here's another book where you insert yourself into the story, and then finally we have Goodnight Moon 
and the Runaway Bunny. And then I just wanted to show you where I'm keeping Skullduggery Pleasant and Harry Potter. This is on top of my TBR bookcase. So we've got the Skullduggery Pleasant series, those that I have read so far up there, and also the Harry Potter series, those that I have read so far. I have read the sixth book, but it's pulled down so I can reread it, and I haven't read the seventh one. And then Beetle the Bard's up there on top. So that was the tour of my red bookcase. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you didn't mind me being lazy. There was a lot of books there, and I just, you know, you guys know what the covers look like, or you can find them on Goodreads, so I'm sure you won't be too bothered by it. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you have a lovely day and enjoy staring at your red books on your shelves, and until next time, continue to be lovely. And just a quick thank you to all of my patrons who are supporting my channel on Patreon. I really appreciate your support, hope you're having a lovely day, and are enjoying staring at all of the books that you have read on your shelves.